So ever since the city decided to install these cameras, which charge everyone a toll who drives into Manhattan, they've come up with a new idea, noise cameras to ticket drivers who honk their horns. And some people are actually pretty happy about this. You can expect noise cameras across New York City. The devices will be used to spot noisy vehicles. Think it's a good idea? Yes. I wake up at three in the morning and it's like people honking. A minimum of five cameras will be placed in each borough. Fines are hefty, starting at $800 and increasing to $2,500. What New York City is saying to drivers is that there's no room for your cars. I think that maybe the city should start focusing on the mopeds and the mobile scooters. If your car makes noise, you will soon be found by the city of New York and punished. Do you think the city's loud? Yes, it is. Do you think this will help make it so people can sleep at night? I don't think so. You don't think so? So there's other noise out there that's even worse. And that's the big controversy about noise cameras because yes, traffic's loud, but so is the subway and this gas generator right here. Listen to this thing. And construction sites are particularly bothersome. And this doesn't just include honking, it also includes cars with loud mufflers. Yep, that's right, you're gonna get a ticket too. New York City is saying to drivers is that there's no room for your cars. I think that maybe the city should start focusing on the mopeds and the mobile scooters and maybe start having them get licenses and maybe use that as a way to build revenue instead of continuously charging, you know, drivers. Now look, as somebody who has a neighbor who owns a Honda Civic that makes the exact same noises I was just making, to be honest, I'm hoping they put one of these cameras on my street so that I can sleep at night because this guy only drives at night. But my inner American who loves loves freedom, wonders if this is just a little bit too far. I mean, we've already got the red light cameras, the speed cameras. Now we're gonna have cameras for noises and minor annoyances. But this makes me wonder what law will come next. And the way the cameras will work is, first of all, you won't be able to see them like these toll cameras. No, 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 they will be hidden. And the city's actually been pretty clear that they're not gonna tell us where they're setting them up. That way they can catch people without those people knowing and evading them. But when they detect a loud noise, they will send a ticket to the vehicle's registered owner. And they're gonna measure vehicle sound from a distance of about 50 feet. And although pretty much everyone hates the speed cameras and the red light cameras, these new noise cameras actually have more support than you might think. You can expect noise cameras across New York City. The devices will be used to spot noisy vehicles. The idea has already been piloted in different parts of the city, and officials say now that testing is done, there are plans to implement it. So after testing the waters in a bunch of different locations, they figured out that these noise cameras are actually a viable way to write tickets and generate money for the city. Now at first, each borough is only gonna get a maximum of five noise cameras. And what that probably means is at first, the impact of these is gonna be minor, but as they expand the program, I'm sure that will change. They probably wanna make sure that the cameras don't increase road rage and contribute to other road problems before they roll them out everywhere. The cameras work similar to red light or speed cameras. They're activated when they detect a noise over a certain decibel and can snap pictures of license plates to issue fines. Those fines will start in the hundreds and could go up. So the noise threshold here is 85 decibels, again, from a distance of 50 feet. And what's interesting is it's gonna cover honking and loud mufflers, but it's not gonna cover loud music. Now, apparently in New York, it's already illegal to have a car that's louder than 90 decibels, but noise ordinance laws on the road are rarely enforced. And that's why there's so many complaints about traffic noise from people who live in apartments. District 4 City uh, Council Member Keith Powers, Powers right? is behind the bill. Yes. Everything we're talking about when it comes to noise is about obnoxious, unnecessary, too much noise. District 4, Manhattan, that's where we are right now, and this is one of the loudest parts of the entire city. If that second story apartment window is your window, you probably never sleep ever. There's a crowd of people, there's all this traffic, and there's a light right there. Whoever bought that place, the realtor probably threw in a set of noise-canceling headphones. Just look at all this traffic, absolutely crazy. But to be honest with you, I think this is the political equivalent of low-hanging fruit. Yes, there's a lot of cars on the road, but there's even more people living in the apartments around the road, and the solution is an automatic money-generating camera that the city owns and operates. So residents are gonna get less noise, the city's gonna get more money. It's an easy win, there's no way this wasn't gonna pass. Officials aren't releasing where 
where the cameras will be, the locations being withheld on purpose. But if you're guilty of a noisy ride, fines could be coming your way if or when you're caught. So I get that they're trying to be secretive about where they put the cameras, but we live in a world where people have cell phones. There's a bunch of guys in the middle of the night installing something in a tree. You bet someone's gonna take a picture of that. But then the question becomes, if people know that there's a noise camera somewhere and they stop making noise, isn't the camera serving its purpose and working? Or is the camera's purpose to stop noise and generate income, not just one or the other? That's a big question. But how much money is the city actually gonna make from operating these things? And how do they know the cameras are actually gonna be effective? And are noise cameras really the best use of the city's resources right now? People honking. And I've been living in this neighborhood for 59 years. The noise level has escalated unbelievably. All right, so before we discuss how much money these cameras might make, it's important to understand that local residents, they've got a lot riding on this, being successful. And that's because this past year, the average rent for an apartment spiked at $5,600 a month. If you're paying $5,600 a month to sleep here or here and you can't sleep, you're gonna be upset. And street noise, road noise, honking, it's a real life alarm clock at the worst possible time. When I lived in Manhattan, I lived in an apartment on a very busy street corner, kind of like this one. There were buses, there were cars, there were trucks, and there was noise from workers at construction sites like this one. It was absolutely deafening. A minimum of five cameras will be placed in each borough. Their locations based on 311 complaints. Fines are hefty, starting at $800 and increasing to $25. $500 for repeat offenders. Ouch, $800 for the first offense, $2,500 on the third offense, that's a ton of money. The city is gonna make an absolute killing from these tickets. And although the initial amount of cameras is low at only five per borough, they're gonna be strategically positioned in parts of town where there are the most complaints. Probably like at this busy intersection. And since the city already has a pretty much useless 311 noise complaint system, they already know where the most people are having the most problems. This is a graph showing how complaints are skyrocketing across the city. And here we have a little noise map, the dark blue areas, those are the loudest, and that's actually where we are right now, up by Columbus Circle in Midtown. And New York's already so expensive, there's no way drivers have an appetite for multiple tickets that can add up to $2,500 a pop. And these fines are gonna be on top of the new congestion tolls, which are gonna charge drivers $23 a day to enter this part of the city. But I'm wondering, how do you fight a noise ticket? I'm not an attorney, if you are, leave a comment. What are the defenses? Would you have to say that you were honking your horn to maybe prevent an emergency or something? And what if your muffler's too loud? Would you have to get it independently tested to verify that it's less than 85 or 90 decibels? The city Department of Environmental Protection supports the technology. And so far, the department has issued 218 violations for modified mufflers and 147 violations for excessive honking. So not only is the city's Department of Environmental Protection all in on this and completely behind it, they've been testing the program with eight cameras throughout the city for the last year. Which means they've probably been able to iron out a lot of the bugs in these things. At least we hope. It would be nice not to get a ticket for something someone else did. But even if you think installing noise cameras is a massive government overreach and a power grab. It's important to understand that there are valid health reasons for why these might be a good idea and why more cities should have them. Imagine walking down any crowded city street. Now close your eyes and imagine hearing this. I'd freak out. Sound like gunshots? I mean, I'd be pretty terrified, to be honest. That sound is actually coming from the tailpipes of cars. These so that's actually something that I hadn't personally thought of. New York City apparently has a gunshot detection system. And if you have loud mufflers backfiring, it's gonna cause emergency alerts and it's gonna panic people, but it's gonna alert the police to things that aren't actually going on. And that's a big problem. Police are short staffed right now. And it frightens people who are just walking down the street. The city doesn't need fear and panic just gripping people as they go about their daily business. And you could probably argue that people being afraid of New York hurts the local economy and local restaurants like this one. On top of that, certain parts of the city are also gun-free zones, like Times Square down the street from here. That's 
actually a gun-free zone. And if a car with a super loud tailpipe is that big of an issue, we shouldn't have this at all in New York City, even if they're fun to drive and reasonably cool to look at. And believe it or not, a few years ago in Times Square, an incident took place with loud vehicles that made people think the city was under attack. Screaming, scattering, widespread panic in Times Square after mistaking the sounds of a motorcycle backfiring for the worst. And we just got pop, 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 pop. It sounded like gunshots. It definitely did. Um two or three thousand people maybe just like dissipated into like thin air. So I guess if you live in a part of the country where you're surrounded by loud backfiring cars, this isn't gonna be a big deal to you, but here it's very rare and people are already really nervous right now. Tensions are very high as far as safety goes and all those people running and stampeding each other, someone could have gotten really, really hurt. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if loud cars and street related antics caused similar incidents. But even if we don't have another mass stampede caused by a motorcycle that's a little bit too loud, the acceptable levels of noise that you can hear for a long period of time, those levels are lower than constant exposure to something that's 85 decibels. That's dangerous. And loud street noise could detrimentally affect people in an apartment or office. For reference, the American Speech Language Hearing Association lists sounds that exceed 85 decibels that include a subway, passing motorcycle, and on the more extreme side, firearms and fireworks. And this is actually why some people, you'll see them wearing earplugs on the street or especially in the New York City subway where noise levels get crazy loud. Some of the trains, when they come screeching into the station like over at Union Square, it's just deafening and ear piercing. That's dangerous. If you do that every day, it's gonna add up. But unfortunately, constant noise in the city is such an issue that some New Yorkers have gotten fed up with it and have taken matters into their own hands. him a one-man ticket blitz. Dietering has spent months searching for New York City bars, restaurants, and shops that play music spilling out onto the sidewalk. And then he, a regular citizen, issues those businesses noise violations. Thousands of them. Is this music illegal? It's coming out of the door? Yeah. Would you issue a place like this a ticket? Yeah. That's crazy. If you live in a loud part of the city, you're gonna wish you had a neighbor like that guy who goes around finding loud businesses, writing them tickets. And this story is actually from five months ago, so he's probably still out there doing it. And that's because of this weird technicality in the New York City noise code, which allows private citizens to issue a summons to a business. Now, of course, the business doesn't just pay the fine. You'll have to go to court and back up your findings. And there's also another ordinance that allows you to record a loud idling vehicle for a specific period of time to also use as proof. But apparently, if you prove the noise violation in court, you're entitled to 20 to 50% of the fine that the business pays. And the guy in the story claims to have issued over 500 tickets to loud bars and restaurants, totaling around $600,000 in fines. Half of that is definitely a full-time job. I don't care if you live in New York or anywhere else on the planet. That's a good living right there, if you're victorious in all of them. This month, a group of seven bar owners and managers told the I-team they believe the city's citizen complaint law is being abused. Each of them has received multiple tickets for noise violations written by deterring, adding up to thousands of dollars. And I guess the only downside to making your living ratting out local businesses is that you will be hated by the purveyors of bites to eat in your neighborhood. You probably can't go to a restaurant safely without worrying about what's going to happen to your food. But on the bright side, you'll save a lot of money not going to local diners anymore. And if you go on a date, it's probably got to take place in another area of town. But after you go there, you'll be tempted to issue more violations. Oh, what a slippery slope that is. So right now I can hear music in the street coming from over this direction. That means one of these places could get a summons. And since you've got to appear in court to back up your findings, the people that own these restaurants, they're going to know you on a face name basis. So there's basically no way to hide if this is how you make your living. But as unbelievable as this particular story is, it's got nothing on what was happening four years ago, a couple of blocks north of here. They had 20 cement 
trucks at 3 o'clock in the morning idling. Mike says he tried to ask for some peace and quiet at night. When that fell on deaf ears, he took the developer, the construction company, and even the bank financing the project to small claims court. And this non-lawyer won. Now that's wild. Here you have this 70-year-old Upper East Side resident who's taking on local drug stores and grocery stores that have deliveries at all random hours of the day and actually winning. That's wild. Like, look at this Christides right here. I'm not hating on this place, but I don't see much of a loading bay area. They're going to have to take deliveries from the street. Same deal with this Dwayne Reed drug store. And look at this natural market right here. There's apartments directly above it. You know they hear all the noise that happens from people unloading vehicles in the middle of the night. Just listen to the noise from this loud truck. There's no way that rumbling engine isn't audible from all the apartments over here. But at the end of the day, that's a pretty big truck. And even though it makes a lot of noise, if it's got to park somewhere to put food in a grocery store and they want to do it at 3 a.m. when they're not getting parking tickets and inconveniencing other people by being all over the sidewalk with their skids and their pallets and their loading dock, you can't blame them for trying. But apparently when this resident went after the businesses for noise, he ended up taking them to small claims court where the limit is $10,000. Mike says after this guy refused to be respectful while delivering at 3 a.m., he took Rite Aid, Dwayne Reed, and Starbucks to small claims. More victories. All these chains on 2nd Avenue, we're told, now have their supplies delivered earlier in the evening. This is like the ultimate little guy come from behind story. These companies, you know they've got attorneys on retainer and they had no way to defeat this guy who was like, this is the law, you violated it, I have proof. And what's really wild is that even after suing and winning against all these businesses and accumulating all this money, what he ended up doing with it is even more shocking. As for the financial settlements, Mike has donated almost all of it, thousands of dollars, to local charities. Isn't that crazy? He gave away the money. And what that makes me wonder is, do we really need more automated noise cameras or do we need more ways for people who are well-meaning to kind of police the rest of society in a secret way that no one knows about and have everyone just distrust each other a little bit more? You know what? That doesn't sound too great either. Let me know what you think the right solution for noises in New York City. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.